about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. So this is something we've already done before. And... Yeah. And I can't tell if I should... Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please. I can't tell if I should just restart it all, real. or... I must be mm, real. I don't know. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Okay. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. Well, I've already done that. Just making sure. So let's not take that route again. Even though it's... I can't really remember which way Wait, I went for that. Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. What orders? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. Yes, let's do that. I'm trying to get back to the room with the phone. I'm going to answer the phone. No, wait. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I can't tell if I'm making progress anymore. What is this? Oh, I still can't go in there, right? Yeah. Wait, what? Because the boss knows that what the boss says goes if the boss has suffered losses, then that's what the boss chose. Right. Okay. Nothing? Anything? Hey! Okay. I'm guessing the boss's room... Okay, what about here? Ah, I can go in here. Uh, elevator. Hey! It, it works! Let's go. Mm -mm. Doesn't say what floor I'm going on. This reminds me of that Gmod game where you spend your entire time in an elevator. Actually, can I read this? A short history of the... of the... ah... Uh, so much shaking. Relations? Between Poland and Austria-Hungary. Oh... I can hear I can hear him mumbling. Uh, 
Ugh. So what's new with you guys? <laughs> okay, come on. Please release me! Ah! Oh, here we go. Thank heavens. Oh my god, we didn't go anywhere. That is lame. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling <laughs> books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 284. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. Oh, right. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. I don't remember where this takes me, even though I've, I've done this before. Will this take me to the same ending now? Because if it does, I may just want to begin and, you know, uh, start from the beginning again. Because I don't want you guys to have to watch this all. Uh... Uh, oh, right! Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. I haven't been here yet. I went to the escape route last time. Alright. What does that say? I don't know, numbers? The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Do I have the strength? Mm. Here we go! CCTV! Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Oh, okay. Elevator? Elevator, oh! This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Maybe, maybe. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. So it sounds like I'm supposed to blow everything up. Four. Four. Clearly this does nothing. So I'm going to continue exploring. 
as much as I want to continue pressing 4. In fact, if I wasn't recording, I'd probably keep pressing that for at least 10 minutes. No? Useless buttons? Alright, what about you? What do, you, what do you do? Nope. Console disabled. And I can't do anything with this either. Dang it, I wanna do something. How dare they put in buttons that do nothing? Okay. So, to the power station. Some like it hot and some sweat when the heat is on. What is that? Really? Just a, just a circle with red lights? What if I push all the buttons in order? I'm not going to do that. Oh! Neato! Terminal screen. What you gonna do? And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. No! Oh, what? You'd like to know where your co-workers are. A moment of solace before you're obliterated. All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of...